All the sharpening systems work, at least all the ones I've encountered, but after 20 something years of sharpening and 15 years of testing sharpening equipment for Popular Woodworking Magazine, I wanted to share with you what I have settled on for my own personal sharpening kit. Everything here is 100% paid for out of my pocket. There's no affiliates, there's no sponsorships. Uh, none of this was given to me free. I had to pay full price for all of this. And so I'm going to be telling you both the pluses and the minuses for uh, each piece of the equipment. Uh, let's start off with my grinder. Uh, this was my grandfather's grinder. Uh, I have seen this for sale at uh, garage sales. Uh, for almost no money. Uh, I don't have anything special as far as the tool rest goes. This is the stock piece of uh, steel. <laughs> and uh, we have a Norton 80 grit 3X wheel on here. And that is really the heart of the system is that it's a fast speed grinder, the shaft isn't bent, and I have a nice friable wheel on it and uh, the friable wheel is what carries heat away as we grind. So the only downside to the 3X wheel is it gets eaten up really fast and uh, they're a little pricier than a regular wheel, but uh, darn well worth it. Um, the stones I use every day, these are uh, the Shapton, uh, sometimes called the Pro Series, sometimes called the Kuromaku Series. These are not the glass stones. Don't like the glass stones for a variety of reasons. Buy me a beer and I'll tell you about it. Lots of abrasive on these stones. Uh, this is my second kit in 20 something years. Uh, I have a thousand grit. I believe this is a 5,000, might be a 4,000. I think it's a five. It's the purple grit and we have uh, the 8,000. Uh, one honing stone, two polishing stones. It's all I have ever wanted or needed. Uh, they're great because they cut fast and they're great because you don't have to soak them. You just splash and go. They kind of stink because they're so expensive. And uh, so it's an investment, but because I sharpen every day, it's not that big a deal. I keep the stones flat with this DMT dia flat plate. Uh, I don't know which grid it is. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's expensive and it lasts a lot longer than other diamond plates, but it is not impervious to wear. Uh, we use it a lot and we have students in here. So this poor plate sees a lot of work, um, but it's a good thing. Uh, I've never encountered one that is any better. I hold my tools with uh, the Lee Nielsen honing guide. Uh, this is for my plain irons and my chisels. Everything else, I pretty much freehand sharpen. Uh, does the Lee Nielsen, which costs a lot of money, does it sharpen your edges any better? And the answer is no, not really, but it is really well made by a company in America, by people who I believe in. And so I'm willing to spend the money on it. For many years, this is what I used. Uh, this is the Eclipse 36. Uh, which is no longer made today, but you can find these everywhere on the used market. This one was made in Great Britain. Uh, you'll find it on eBay for 20 bucks or 25 bucks maybe. Um, it works just as well, meaning it will hold the edges, uh, tools and get, give you good edges. You have to have a block that has two stops on it, uh, one for chisels and one for plane blades, but other than that, no big deal. So the guide is not all that big a deal. Moving over here, uh, this is my uh, setting block. So when I put my tools into my honing guide, this is what sets the angle. I only use 35 degrees. Uh, this is some ultra high molecular weight plastic left over from some stupid jig uh, and a piece of plywood. Uh, someone suggested you could use uh, cutting board material, which is basically the same stuff. So yeah, make yourself one of these. Don't ask us to make these for you. Uh, a cheap ruler. This is uh, for plain irons that I do the ruler trick on. It's a thin ruler. I don't know how thin, uh, but I just use the same ruler. So you can buy them at a home center. I think General Tools makes them for three or four bucks. This is one uh, that I got from Lee Nielsen uh, Tool Works. Uh, they give them away uh, at their tool shows, or they used to when there were tool shows back in the day. Uh, so I guess there is one piece of equipment on here that I didn't pay for. 
Also important, uh, this is a rubberized abrasive. It's the Sandflex Hand Block by Klingspore. Uh, this is great for cleaning crap off of your blades, for removing small bits of rust, even large amounts of rust. They come in coarse, medium, and fine. Get whichever one you want. It really doesn't matter. I don't see really any difference between uh, the three blocks. You don't need all three. You just need one of these little blocks. And uh, this is probably the second one in my lifetime. So they go, they go a long time. Uh, moving over here, I really don't use this very much. It's just an aluminum square that I use uh, for checking how curved my camber is on my plain irons. Uh, you could also use a piece of aluminum. Uh, from the home center, probably a straight piece of wood would also work. It doesn't have to be red and fancy. Uh, this is my scraper sharpening kit. Oh, I know. Very exciting. Number one is this block of wood. I know it looks like Coca-Bola, but it's not Coca-Bola. It's just a block of wood with a chamfer planed on one corner, and this allows me to uh, stone my scrapers along the edge um, at 90 degrees. Get yourself one from the store sometime. The other thing we have here is the Arno Burnisher. Uh, we sell these uh, through uh, Crucible Tools. We don't make them. Uh, it is really nice burnisher, but you know what? There are tons of nice burnishers out there. It doesn't really matter. It's just a piece of carbide. So uh, I did pay for this one many years ago, so even I don't get freebies from Crucible Tool, at least as far as this one goes. What else do we have? Very important is what you're looking here. This is a boot tray that I got from uh, the home center. And then I put in a piece of hardboard to cover up the fancy stupidness uh, that looks like, I, you know, I won't even show you. You'll just have to trust me that there's fancy stupidness under there. Um, and this boot tray holds all my mess and Waterstones make a stupid mess. So that's why I have this and I can put it under my bench. And so I have a sharpening station that, uh, is very quickly set up and very quickly uh, put away. And then last but not least is my Flowmaster. Flowmaster, Flowmaster. Uh, it is a pumpable uh, spray bottle. Woo! You can find this plant mister at the home center and I think they cost about 10 bucks. Uh, some, sometimes uh, they last for years and sometimes they last for minutes. We don't know why, uh, but this one has lasted uh, for years, and so uh, we love it. And so that is the whole kit. I think I've got about everything except the pieces of junk. So um, that is what a real sharpening kit looks like, uh, one that I have used for many years, and though I don't like endorse products or recommend them, I can say that uh, it's all good. All right, damn it. Megan reminded me of one other thing. Uh, it's my whoopee. This is an oil-soaked rag. Uh, we use microfiber cloths that you can buy uh, for cleaning glasses or cleaning cars. Very inexpensive. Soak it with the uh, oil of your choice. Jojoba, Camilla, 3-in-1, it doesn't matter. Uh, and this wipes down the tools and keeps rust at bay. So you do need some sort of greasy rag. You do. Anything else I've forgotten? Bye.